Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about black holes. And today we're going to speculate and try to create a black hole of a specific size. Earth size. Anyway, let's try this in Universe Sandbox and welcome to What The Mad. I think you would agree with me when I say that black holes today are probably some of the most fascinating objects out there in the universe. We still don't really know enough about them, we still don't understand a lot about them, but we know that they are definitely out there and we kind of have an idea of how they form. Although not all of them, there is actually a type of a black hole known as intermediate mass black hole that we are not really that clear about. So this black hole right now is actually a... Um, a real object um, at a distance of several thousand light years away from us, known as Cygnus X1a. This is a black hole that's about um, 16 to maybe 18 masses of the sun, and it is um, what's known as a solar mass black hole. Now, these objects are actually very tiny. Uh, this particular object is about 40 to 50 kilometers in radius, and so it's actually the size of a large city, or I guess a large, um, large asteroid. But in terms of mass, it's super, super high. It's uh, basically several uh, masses of uh, the sun. On the other hand, uh, one of the more common questions I'm always asked on the channel is, so if I were to look at Earth and if I were to actually turn it into a black hole, how big of a black hole would it actually make? And to answer this, um, we just need to basically create a black hole out of this planet, which is actually something that we can't do technologically, but we can definitely do theoretically because pretty much everything can be turned into a black hole. As a matter of fact, I would want to one day redefine black hole not as a type of an object, but actually as a state of matter. Anything, including you watching this video, can become a black hole. And we'll talk more about this later, but for Earth to be a black hole, it has to be a very specific size. And in other words, if I were to condense Earth into um, an object of a specific volume, it would automatically become a black hole that would actually last for quite a long time. As a matter of fact, um, I'm looking at the calculations here that I did earlier, and it says that it would last for 5.6 times 10 to the 50th power years, which is basically a very, very, very large number. It's, it's like trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions of years. It's a long time, okay? It's gonna last for a long time if we we're if we were to somehow become a black hole, but that's not something that could basically happen without some kind of intervention from a super intelligent type 3 civilization that can actually manipulate stars. So um, to change Earth into a black hole, we need to basically create an object that is relatively small. It's about the size of your thumbnail, actually. I'm going to change this to centimeters, and as soon as I change this object into one centimeter in size, and it kind of shrinks almost um, almost instantly, uh, at this point, you'll see that um, its escape velocity is very, very close to the speed of light. And that's really what defines a black hole. It's an object whose escape velocity is higher than the speed of light. So in other words, no light can actually escape it. So here, as soon as I cross this barrier, which is going to be at around 8.8 .8 millimeters, and if you're having trouble with centimeters and millimeters because you're from the US and you're used to inches, it's about one third of an inch. And so right here at 8.8 .8 millimeters, our Earth becomes a black hole. And so it's basically a thumbnail sized uh, black hole mass of Earth. Now, like I said, this is actually going to last for a long time um, if it were left to its own devices, if it just basically um, orbited our sun and so on. But the thing is that uh, these black holes, um, even if they do exist, and we do think that they actually exist, uh, would be extremely difficult to detect because it actually produces very, very little energy and almost no heat whatsoever. So they're probably out there, but we definitely will not be able to see them very easily. You would probably not even see it if it was very close to you because it's essentially extremely, extremely tiny. But that's not really what we're talking about. We're talking about another type of a black hole, a black hole that's actually size of planet Earth. So um, for this, we need to create a new simulation. And what we want to do is do the opposite. We want to maintain the size of Earth, which is about um, 6,400 kilometers in radius. And we want to increase its mass to the point when it actually turns into a black hole. 
So how massive would this black hole be? Basically, how massive would an Earth-sized black hole be? And the answer to this, well, let's actually just find out uh, by ourselves. So we're gonna keep the size the same, and this time we're going to start increasing its mass. Starting with, I guess, let's do 100 masses of the sun first. And so here, Earth has become some kind of a strange, dark solar object. And as we increase the mass further, it eventually will reach a point again when its surface gravity here will be equivalent to the speed of light. And I think it's around here. So there we go. It's approximately 2200 masses of the sun. So basically, if you were to take 2000 and, and 200 masses of the sun, and if you were to um, condense them into really dense matter that would essentially create a black hole, you would get uh, an Earth-sized black hole. Now, it's interesting that, well, first of all, let's actually compare Earth to this object. You'll see that in terms of the size, they're actually uh, quite similar. We're looking at the border of the black hole, and it's basically the same size as the planet Earth here. Um, but what's interesting is that we believe that these uh, black holes, even though we haven't really found any official ones, are almost always at the center of so-called globular clusters. So, in other words, if I were to go out there and to basically start looking for these black holes um, in our galaxy, I would probably find quite a few of them located in most globular clusters and definitely at the center of the globular cluster. So, how do we find a globular cluster? Well, they're actually really easy to see. Um, as soon as you see a large collection of stars, that's a globular cluster. So let's let's look for one right here. And you can actually see uh, quite a lot here. So all of those little blobs you see um, across the galaxy, these are all globular clusters. So here is one, let's jump to it. And they all are going to look different, but for the most part, they'll just have a very large collection of stars in the middle. And as you can imagine, going in the middle means that you're going to have to go through all of this brightness. But somewhere at the center of this, very likely is an Earth-sized, but extremely massive black hole. Uh, and it's very likely that we're going to at some point find them, but we just still haven't really discovered them, because they are, for the most part, are very difficult to see. And that's because they don't emit uh, that much energy. As a matter of fact, uh, most of these globular clusters, even if they have a black hole um, that I just showed you, would probably hide black holes really well because there are so many other stars that emit energy here that it's difficult to see if there is actually a black hole here. But chances are that they are definitely here and this is what's holding them together. And here's actually one such potential black hole that I just discovered a little bit away from the uh, globular cluster that you're going to see in a distance right there. And so scientists today are actually um, trying to find these black holes, these intermediate black holes, because if we find one relatively soon, it will allow us to explain uh, and to understand the creation of the universe a little bit better, because today we don't really know how the uh, supermassive black holes were formed. And some scientists assume that maybe just maybe the uh, intermediate black holes combined together and created these massive giants. But that's, of course, just a speculation because we're not really sure just yet. And interestingly, it's actually a lot easier to find smaller black holes than it is to find these medium-sized giants. And well, anyway, hopefully now you know how massive a black hole has to be to create an Earth-sized uh, black hole. And here, if I actually let go of the uh, simulation here, you'll see that pretty much everything in our solar system starts falling into this huge, huge Earth-sized black hole, including our sun. That's most likely going to, there we go, get absorbed into this black hole. And so that's kind of all I wanted to show you in this video, and hopefully now you know a little bit more about black holes, intermediate black holes, and in some sense, Earth-sized black holes, which could be pretty much everywhere in our galaxy, but are hiding so well from us. I'll see you guys tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else. Subscribe if you still haven't, and maybe even support this channel on Patreon, because it does help me a lot. Space out, and as always, bye-bye.